Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine equation for integer solutions. So a and b are integers and we have a squared minus b squared equals 12. And we're going to be solving for a and b values. I'll be presenting two approaches, even though the approaches are very similar. Uh, I'll still talk about two different things. Let's start with the first method, which is the pretty typical one. A squared minus B squared is considered a difference of two squares, right? And there's a formula for difference of two squares, which is A plus B times A minus B. Hopefully you knew that, right? Now, A and B are integers because if it said rationals or reals, we would have infinitely many solutions. And obviously we could express one in terms of the other one. But that's not the point. We're going to look for integers. Now, this is nice because this equation is in the factored form. Since a and b are integers, a plus b and a minus b are also integers, right? So from here, we can safely say that, hey, we are factoring 12. So what are some ways to factor 12? There's only a number of ways. You can only factor it in so many ways, such as a plus b can be 12 and a minus b 1. And then a plus b can be 6 and this can be a 2 and then this can be a 4 and this can be a 3 and then this can be a 3 and 4 and then we kind of switch around 2 and 6 and then finally 1 and 12. Of course these are the positives we're also going to consider the negatives but before that let's go ahead and take a look at this picture what is that for? Well this is the picture of a hyperbola or the graph I should say right and actually this equation gives us a hyperbola and we're looking for lattice points on the hyperbola which means points with integer coordinates see if you can spot any one of them from this picture by the way the x intercepts are not integers even though they kind of look like it but what you can do is basically to find the or i should say a intercept right you should set b equal to zero and then from there if you set b equal to zero you're going to get a squared equals 12 so a, a will be plus minus 2 root 3. So those are the values that you are seeing in the picture, which is about 3.4-ish. Anyways, let's go ahead and consider each one of these cases, and then we're going to try to find A and B from there. So in order to be able to do that, I'm going to make a table. This table is going to have the following columns, A plus B, A minus B, and then we're going to have A and B, of course, and I'll tell you how to find it. And then that's going to be our answer, basically, right? So we're going to have a table with four columns and we can add as many rows as possible but let's go ahead and consider the following numbers first right we started off with 12 and 1 so we're gonna set this equal to 12 and this to 1 and then we're gonna do 6 and 2 and then we're gonna do 3 and 4 and then 3 4 and 3 and then what else do we have we have 6 and 2 and finally and these are the positives only by the way and I'm going to go ahead and maybe just do the negatives next. And then finally, we can kind of go with 1 and 12. But here's the thing. How do you find A and B when A plus B is given and A minus B are given? So let's just consider one of these cases. And then I'll tell you what is going on. Because this is an important question. Like, can every number be written as difference of two squares, right? That's a good question. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve this problem now. So suppose I had the first case which is a plus b equals 12 and a minus b equals 1. This is a bad one. You know why? Because when you add these equations up, b is going to cancel out and we're going to end up with a plus a, which is 2a equals 13 and a is equal to 6.5. But wait a minute. 6.5 is not an integer as far as I know. So this is not acceptable, which means if one of these is odd and the other one is even, we're not getting any integer solution. So we might as well just forget about those cases, right? For example, and we could kind of put a check mark here too. For the good cases, check mark means yes, we have a solution. X means we don't have an integer solution, okay? Let's go ahead and put those marks. 12 and 1, one of them is even, the other one is odd, so we're not going to get a solution. 6 and 2 will probably work, so we have a check. 4 and 3, there's some is odd. In other words, if you add these two numbers, if it's odd, then it's not good. 3 plus 4 is odd. 2 plus 6 is even. 
1 plus 12 is also odd. So these are bad cases. We only have two good cases. And let's go ahead and solve each one. So a plus b equals 6 and a minus b equals 2 is one of the good cases. If you add them up, you get 2a equals 8. And from here, you get a equals 4 and b equals 2. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And let's take a look at the other case, which is a plus b equals 2 and a minus b equals 6. Obviously, here the a plus b and a minus b values are switched. That does not change the value of a, but it does change the value of b. So a becomes 4, but b becomes negative 2 from here. So we can kind of write the solutions here as 4, comma, plus minus 2, because 4 does not change any sign. Make sense? Okay, so these are all the good cases with positives. And by the way, I didn't write the answer, but if you go ahead and write it, it's going to be like 4 and 2, and here it's going to be 4 and negative 2. Make sense? Great. Now, this is the positives table. Let's go ahead and clear it up, and then we're going to go ahead and consider the negative cases, right? Okay, let's clean it up and look at the negatives. So here is the negative values, and let's go ahead and take a look. When a plus b and a minus b add up to an odd number, we're not going to have a solution because negative 12 and negative 1 will give us a negative 13. This is a good case, this is a bad case, this is a bad case, this is a good case, and this is a bad case. Pretty much the same thing, but of course the answers will be different. For example, if you look at the second row, if you don't count the top one, then we are looking at the sum of these two numbers, which is negative 4, and then their difference is going to be negative, actually their sum is negative 8, but half of that, and then their difference is going to be negative 4, and half of that is going to be negative 2. Makes sense? And for the other one, the value of a is not going to change, but this time we're going to have a different b value. In other words, negative 4 comma plus minus 2 again is going to be another two ordered pairs. So in total, we seem to have four solutions to this equation. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can find the exact same solutions. And you can definitely try this problem with different numbers, such as what happens if this is 14? Are there any solutions? And guess what? You'll be surprised. Go ahead and check it out. And then hopefully we can talk about later how, which numbers can be written or if all numbers can be written as difference of two squares. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.